All right, welcome to the Robert Show. We are here at Data Plus AI Summit uh, by Data Break. Super excited to have Danny Lee, my old friend. Uh, finally, we meet in person, but uh, so good to have you on the Robert Show. I'm so honored to be here. I'm really super excited for the questions you're going to throw at me, and hopefully, hopefully, I'll actually have answers. <laughs> okay, let's do it. Um, first of all, uh, there were some great announcements that were made at the keynote. I would love to learn a little about that, but then. To start with, uh, I'm pretty sure uh, you're not a familiar, you, you're like not a new face to the audience. Mm -hmm. We've seen you in the open source, you are out there doing so much for the community. So Denny, uh, just for our audience, would you like to introduce yourself, tell us more about what you're working on? I, I know you work a lot on Delta, uh, but would love to know a little about that. Uh, what has been exciting for the Delta community? Oh, appreciate it. No sweat. So, hey, hi everybody. Just in case uh, you don't know who I am, after all, next to this star, yeah, I'm, I'm a peon. But my Not name true. is Denny Lee. Yeah. I'm a senior staff developer advocate at Databricks. I've been a longtime Brickster. I've been here in Databricks since 2015. I did take a small hiatus between 2016 and 2018, and. Uh, the Daybreaks folks were dumb enough to let me back in, so that's on them, okay? <laughs> so, nevertheless, uh, I've been working with the uh, open source community since Apache Spark Day. So, I started contributing to Apache Spark since about 2011, 2012, I want to say. And then I also helped uh, contribute to MLflow. I'm actually a maintainer for Delta Lake right now. Right. And um, I'm, between all those different things, I'm also working on Unity Catalog, which I'm sure you're going to have plenty of questions exactly. on. Um, and as well, also on some of the amazing, really cool Gen AI work, because we actually have both a open source component to it and also the research component that I'm actually, I, will, I will, wouldn't say heavily involved with because mm. then I'd be kiboshing the actual researchers, yeah. but by the same token, the idea is that I work with them to try to communicate and explain some of the latest research and how it's useful for the wider community. So yes, so thank you very much for letting me be here. Now, the second part of your question is, yes. what's exciting for Delta? Well, there was a little small announcement last week about the Databricks acquisition of Tabular. So really cool. We're regulating the ice, some of the original creators of Iceberg uh, aboard at Databricks, which we're right. super, super, super excited about. Yeah. And so the, the key aspect that we want to call it for the wider, not just the Delta communities, the wider Iceberg community, the wider data engineering communities. Really it's this. We know that if you are working with a one of the lake house formats, okay? We actually have always said, use a lake house format, we, mm. you, okay? True. Because right. it allows you not to be locked in a proprietary data source. That's actually super important, right? Exactly. The idea is that you actually have an open. So in other words, even when we were competing with each other, right? We're saying, no, no, it's better for you to be on Iceberg than it is for you to be on some proprietary system. Obviously, as a Databricks employee, I'm like, please Delta, please Delta. But <laughs> the reality is we'd rather have you work on an open system, okay? Right. Now, the problem with the approach was that we end up having three different formats, right? right? And so now when you choose one of the Lakehouse formats, you're locked in. Wait, wasn't the whole point of open to no, not no, have lock-in? No, no. True. Right. Yeah. So we we inadvertently created our own lock-in. Okay? So that's what the whole point is. So there's actually two components. And one that was really loud because of the, you know, it's the acquisition of Tabler right, during the timing of Snowflake Summit, right? Right. But the other part is also our participation with the Apache X table run by the One House and the uh, um, Hudi folks. And so the whole premise that we're trying to get at is like, no, we accidentally, as a community, right, this isn't just our fault, okay, as much as people want to say, ah, it's your fault, Eddie. No, it's, it was a community <laughs> effort, right? The reality is we inadvertently created a lock-in to open formats. Mm. So what are we going to do for the next few years? undo all that, okay? We're gonna go ahead and make sure interops there. So the, the analogy I like using is like, okay, when you're trying to ship a package, well, this is for the American audience because I know you have plenty of people yes. around the world, so yes. I, I am gonna use American terms, so my apologies. Don't worry, I won't use miles in Fahrenheit. I won't, I won't be bad <laughs> like that, okay? But it'd be like UPS versus FedEx versus mm -hmm. USPS, okay? In the end, do you care? You don't. You chose one of them for whatever reason, the package gets to where you need to go. True. That's all you care about. Right. That's the same principle. We want interop between all of the lake house formats. So whatever one you chose, for whatever reason, that's cool. That's completely cool. We're going to ensure interop. We're going to work really closely with all the different communities to make sure the interoperability between these formats. Mm. So that way, whatever choice you made, guess what? It's good. Yes. Simple as that. 
So you, yeah. you're hearing from the horses more themselves about you know the lock-ins, how they are undoing things, and but at the same time, it's about how easily you're kind of getting it for the developers out there, where, or, and for the enterprises out there, where you don't need to worry about you know the, the data being locked in. Exactly right. See, in the end, it's all about saying. Your data is your IP, okay? You know how yes. people were using terminology like it's your gold or it's your oil, whatever. <laughs> it's your IP. That's the most important aspect, which is the data you have is becoming more and more the most valuable aspect that an enterprise or even a small medium business would have. So make sure that you always have access to that data. That if you don't like the vendors, including Databricks, okay? Guess what? You can take your data, go bye-bye, and you're still good to go. Right, exactly. that's the whole point, yeah. right? Yeah. That's what we mean by removing that particular lock-in. Now, again, there was this issue about, like, inadvertently we sort of created one by accident. It's okay. That's what we're fixing right now, together. So, in other words, the Hootie community, the Iceberg community, the Delta community, all three of us are working together, realizing this is actually what's preventing people from going to Gen AI. Gen AI. True. Because they're so busy working about, hey, what happened to my data? Okay, so we're going to slowly and steadily remove those barriers. I'm so. going to go into the weeds of the Gen AI as well. Later, Absolutely. But, uh, you know I'm going to have fun with that. Yes. <laughs> uh, so today the keynote had like uh, announcement around Unity catalog. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm kind of excited to hear from you what are your yeah. thoughts. Ali mentioned a lot of things. Uh, right. But I'm kind of curious to learn from an open source perspective. How does it help the community? How are the developers going to benefit out of it? Right. Can you share a little about that? Dinner? Absolutely, no. Yeah. So that's a wonderful question, and I figured this would happen soon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so the reality is, so we're working to fix the lake house format, so that way there's full interop and you're good to go. What we're recognizing is that there was started brewing was actually a catalog war. Mm -hmm. Now, again, we weren't trying to create one, but one started happening, okay? Cool. so. Again, part of the reason why I'm so happy to work with the Iceberg community and the Delta community together, and also the Hootie community, is because what we recognize, what we realized, is that, okay, not only are we fixing the lake house format issues, mm -hmm. we're going to stop any semblance of a catalog board before it even starts. Okay? Because you, when, so remember, you got locked in, quote unquote, with your lake house format with your data. Right. The problem with the catalog, if I, I'm now obviously I'm oversimplifying the problem by a grand degree, is that now you're locking in your metadata. <laughs> oh, great. So you locked in, okay, you, you unlocked my data, but you're still locking my metadata. So we're ending that before it even starts. Right, in other okay. words, right away, yeah. what, what does open source Unity catalog? It has the Unity APIs, it also supports the Iceberg APIs, mm -hmm. Iceberg REST catalog APIs specifically. Right, so right from the get go, we're doing that right, so that way people are going, got it. So in other words, whatever catalog you chose, correct, that was the right one. Yeah. We're good. And again, the Iceberg communities, the Delta communities, and all the other communities. You'll actually tomorrow, oh, sorry, since we're time sensitive, this, is, this will probably um, come on a different day. But when, when you see some of the announcements, you're going to see lots of logos already about the community that's working together about, hey, we all want to work on the specification. We all want to work on the reference implementation because that way, even if I as a partner, as a company, as a customer, whatever it is, decide that I want to build my own catalog. My catalog's better than everybody else's. <laughs> cool. No, no. Seriously. Cool. Yeah. But we are all following the same spec. Yes. So that means there's interop. So I don't care if there's one, I don't care if there's 20. There is interop now. That means those systems can talk to each other. So again, now the customer's metadata is no longer locked. locked. And that's also super important. It's a game changer yes. for sure. Exactly. Uh, thanks for sharing all those details. And uh, I'm going to share like the links with our audience as well, where they can learn more about that, it. Thank you very much. Yes, yes. I didn't bring uh, a billboard today, sorry. <laughs> yeah. yes. And um, uh, also the topic about Gen AI. Um, mm. You know, enterprise leaders were, you know, if you go back like say a year back, yeah. enterprise leaders were so confused about so many things in terms of the metadata, the data, the security, the privacy. Mm -hmm. With the openness, yes, things have changed massively. Correct. How do you see it? How is it going to help them in the next, say, three to five months? Where do you see them moving? How openness it's going to be for them to, you know, uh, you know, use, say, deltas, use iceberg? How do you see that? Okay, so where we're hoping, okay, now it's going to be longer than three to five months because 
when it comes to three to five months, when you're talking about the Gen AI world, that's more like, okay, that's five years, what you just mentioned, within the context of like, for example, a large language model, okay? Right. But within the context of the data side, what we have already shown and proven in multiple, and it's not just us, okay? Multiple companies have shown the same, exact same thing. The higher quality your data, the better your model, okay? So right. that means, why, why is Databricks so interested in this and why is the wider community interested in this? Because we need higher quality data. So Ooh. having a solid catalog and having a solid lakehouse format allows you to have higher quality data. You don't have corruptions, you have, don't have duplications, you don't have a lot of problems. All the problems that you run into by just simply throwing a bunch of Parquet files directly into some S3 or uh, some cloud object store, no, we're avoiding that problem. But that's only part of the solution, right? Mm. If I go the all the way to the other end, to the AI side of the problem, the reality is large language models, multi-model models, I'm sure, because this video will probably come out in a week or two. Yes. Cool. I'm sure there'll be something else by then, okay? 100%. <laughs> right? This is the nature. Always exactly. Yeah. This is the nature of Gen AI, okay? But the reality is it doesn't matter. The researcher will always push to have these better, cooler, better built models. Right. But what's missing? Governance. What's missing? Safety. So the reality is, how is the wider data and AI communities going to converge together to actually give you these things? So part of the reason for Unity Catalog is the same thing. Giving you some form of lineage to understand what model was being used with what data at what time frame. Yep. Okay? It, you can also go ahead and understand the, the basic principles. <laughs> yep. Understand the basic principles of, okay, I have a model repository. I know exactly which version of the model I'm working with, which, which version of Python, which version of scikit-learn, right. which version of the data, okay? So that's a good starting point. Remember, starting point. Starting okay? point, yeah. yeah. Now the problem that we are usually running into though is safety. And we're not there yet, okay? Right. Now this is a wider community effort. So by the time, again, when this comes out, I'm sure there'll be other initiatives, but the context is that there's a lot of really good researchers, a lot of really good companies that are understanding what you ultimately need to build are these systems called compound AI systems, okay? Mm. There's a running joke, by the way, at Data and AI Summit that Matei Zaharia has a compound AI systems workshop. And the running joke is, uh, that was tweeted out, I think last week, was that it's easier to get Beyonce tickets than it is to get into the <laughs> compound AI <laughs> workshop, right? And so, it's hilariously funny, but the reason this was set up this way is because some of the top researchers are all together to try to build best practices around compound AI systems. Right. Because right. the reality is that when you build a large language model, okay, for example, RAG, everybody talks about RAG, oh, RAG, 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 okay? RAG, by the way, is retrieval augmented generation. The whole purpose is that you're saying that, okay, I've got a large language model. If I go ahead and get timely information, I want to be able to hit some data store, database, vector database, to get the latest information so I can right. provide that to you. Right. But also, don't forget, it's not just about uh, uh, it's not just about like the most recent data. It's also about authentication. For example, here's a here's a funny question. All right, I'm in my uh, enterprise system, and I'm going to ask the question, "What's my CEO's salary?" Now, <laughs> number one, am I allowed hallucinating that answer? <laughs> Probably not. Okay. Number two, it, even if I don't want to bother with the hallucinations. <laughs> yeah. All right. The, the, the other key problem that you actually have to worry about is like, okay, are you even allowed to ask that question in the first place? Yeah. Right. You don't actually want to submit that question to the large language that model volume. if you're not authorized to ask that question. So that's the nature of compound AI systems. Right. Okay? So you actually want to basically protect these systems and improve the performance of these systems. And sometimes doing that is not actually improving or fine tuning the large language model, it's actually improving a whole other aspects around the system. So that's where the best practices are kicking in because yeah. we don't know, so we're working together. So yes, it's hard to get into the compound AI systems workshop right now, yes. but the outputs of that are coming in right now. So that's actually what we're working on. And you're going to see a lot of the output over the next next month or two, seeing exactly what new best practices we're going to get from this. And again, it. it's a growth thing. We're going to yeah. learn together. And so that's also why open so important because it's a very academic nature where we're all sharing information because we're, we're actually understanding we don't know the whole story yet. And so anytime a company goes and says, oh, we've all got to figure it out, I'm like, no, no we don't. Even the best researchers in the world don't have wow. this figured out. I love right? it, I yeah. love the analogy. Yeah. Thanks for sharing yeah. those details. It always helps for the community to understand because yeah. it's about, we are, you only get a use case when you do it. 
Right. Or when you fail. Exactly. Only, yeah, you basically have to try, right. try, try, except as you called out, right? Failing is actually a good thing, yeah, especially when definitely. it comes to anything that's software engineering based, right? Yeah. You're going to try, you're going to fail, and you're like, whoa, that was a really bad idea, okay? <laughs> but you can't fail from a security perspective. You can't. Right, you yeah. can't fail from a perspective of hallucinating information that's crucial, right? right? So we have to put safeguards around it. So over time, you're going to see those systems in. Like, for example, you've got Llama Guard uh, that actually the, the Llama folks are putting in together. Right. You, uh, there's um, Guardrails AI, a really cool startup that we work with. Yep. So all these other systems that are coming into play. And there's, by the time this comes out, I'm sure there'll be five other ones, by the way. So <laughs> those are the ones that I'm just talking to recently. That's all. For sure. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. Uh, Danny, one last question for our audience. Okay, okay. I'm pretty cool. sure yeah. they would love to learn more about it. Where can they reach out to you? Is LinkedIn a best place oh. uh, where can they learn about all the you know the links I'm pretty sure you're gonna post about it on LinkedIn oh yeah yeah, yeah yes so oh. just FYI I usually am on LinkedIn quite a bit I'm not on X as much I should be but I'm just not yes. I, I'm a little too lazy okay <laughs> I only have time for one of them so I end up choosing yeah. LinkedIn don't know why it, it, it works so yeah. so LinkedIn uh, LinkedIn slash in slash Denny Geely if you're really bored and you really want to learn about coffee and food and traveling, you can go to my blog, which is dennygeely.com, but I'm pretty sure I'm changing the topic altogether when I just did that, so my apologies. <laughs> no worries at all, Denny. <laughs> it was such a pleasure hosting you on The Robert Show. And Thank you very much, man. Finally, good to meet you. Yes. I, maybe I can't wait to chat with you after five months and learn everything much more in depth. Oh, no, no, we'll right? try it in three months. It'll be yeah. different anyways. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, thank you very much for watching.